Hello everyone, welcome to Alfonso Academy. I'm Sir Peter Alfonso and this is the third part of the chapter Periodic Classification of Elements. So today we will discuss about the modern periodic law and modern periodic table. When Mendeleev put forth his periodic table, the scientific world did not know anything about the interior of the atom. But the scientists were studying, they were trying to find out the composition of an atom. On the discovery of electron, the scientists tried to explore the relation between the number of electrons in an atom and its atomic number. They tried to find out what the number of electrons had to do with the atomic number. In 1913 AD, the English scientists demonstrated that the atomic number of an element corresponds to the positive charge on the nucleus, which is nothing but the number of protons in the nucleus of the atom of that element. This revealed that the atomic number is a more fundamental property of an element than its atomic mass and accordingly the statement of the modern periodic law was stated that the properties of the elements are periodic function of their atomic numbers. Earlier Mendeleev had stated that the properties of the elements are periodic function of their atomic masses but now English scientist Henry Mosley did an experiment and based on that he said that the atomic number is more fundamental property of an element than its atomic mass that is chemical properties of an element are more related to the atomic number than its atomic mass and based on that he stated the law properties of elements are a periodic function of their atomic numbers and this was named as modern periodic law. Next let's see what is modern periodic table. English scientist Henry Mosley arranged all the elements in an increasing order of their atomic numbers. The classification of elements resulting from an arrangement of the elements in an increasing order of their atomic number is called as the modern periodic table. The properties of the elements can be predicted more accurately with the help of modern periodic table which is formed on the basis of atomic numbers. So the elements are arranged in the increasing order of their atomic numbers in modern periodic Table. The modern periodic table is also called as the long form of the periodic table. So next let's go to the structure of the modern periodic table. The modern periodic table contains 7 horizontal rows. So it contains 7 horizontal rows which are called as periods and they are numbered from 1 to 7. So periods are numbered from 1 to 7. So there are 7 periods in modern periodic table and it contains 18 vertical columns which are called as groups. So these are the vertical columns which are called as groups. They are total number of 18 vertical columns numbered from 1 till 18. So 1, 2, 3, 4, so on to 18. So this arrangement of 7 periods and 18 vertical columns which are called as groups results in the formation of boxes. So periods are horizontal, groups are vertical. It, it results in the formation of boxes. Each box corresponds to a place for one single element. So only one element can be placed in each every single box. These elements are arranged with increasing order of their atomic numbers. That means when the elements are arranged with increasing order of their atomic numbers, one proton is being added by every box. That means electron is also added because atom is neutral, number of protons are equal to number of electrons and we are not concerned about the neutrons right now. So the upper part of the box indicates the atomic number of the element. So if you take example of hydrogen, its atomic number is 1 which is indicated in the upper part of this box. Then comes the symbol of the element which is H over here for hydrogen, then the name of the element which is hydrogen and then the atomic mass of the element which is 1.008 this is for hydrogen. Apart from these 7 horizontal rows which are called as periods, there are 2 more rows which are placed right at the bottom of the modern periodic table. The first row is termed as the lanthanide series and the second row is termed as the actinide series. So the elements with atomic number from 57 till 71 are placed in the lanthanide series. And the elements from atomic number 89 till 103 are placed in the actinide series. So there are total number of 118 boxes in the entire periodic table. That means there are 118 places for the elements in the modern periodic table. Now all the 118 elements are discovered and the modern periodic table is completely 
field. Going on next, the modern periodic table can be divided into four blocks. S block, P block, D block and F block. So the S block has the elements which are placed in group 1 and group 2. That means group 1 elements and group 2 elements forms the S block. P block is formed by the elements which are placed from group 13 till group 18. So there are total number of 6 groups forming the P block. Groups 13 till group 18 forms the P block. D block is formed by the elements from group 3 till group 12. So all these groups from group 3 till group 12 forms the D block. And F block is contain, uh, it contains the elements of lanthanide and actinide series. So the and, and lanthanide and actinide series forms the F block. A zigzag line can be drawn in the P block of the modern periodic table. As you can see the zigzag line over here is in the P block of the modern periodic table. The three traditional ways of classifying the elements into metals, non-metals and metalloids can be done with the help of this zigzag line. The elements which lie along the zigzag line are metalloids. The elements like boron, silicon, germanium, arsenic, antimony, tellurium, polonium, these are all metalloids and they lie along the zigzag line. The elements which lie at the left of the zigzag line are non-metals. So the elements which are that side at the left of the zigzag line are non-metals and the elements which lie this side at the right of the zigzag line are all metals. So this is the basic structure of the modern periodic table. The modern periodic law says that the properties of the elements are a periodic function of their atomic numbers. Here properties refer to the physical and chemical properties of the elements. And periodic function means the properties repeat after a certain interval. On adding a certain number to the element in the previous period, we get an element in the next period in the same group with resembling properties. So there are some numbers which on adding we get element in the next period but in the same group with similar properties. So these numbers which we add to the previous element to get the next element in the uh, same group are called as magic numbers. For example, if we take helium which is the first element of group 18 and add 8 to it, we get neon. We get neon after addition of 8. So, helium has atomic number as 2. If we add 8 to it, we get neon. And then add 8 to neon, we get argon. Then add 18 to argon, we get krypton. Then add 18 to krypton, we get xenon, which has atomic number 54. And then add 32 to xenon, we get radon, which has atomic number 86. And then add 32, we get the last element of the group 18 and last element of the periodic table organeson which has atomic number 118 so all these are all these are noble gases and they resemble with uh, their properties with each other so on addition of these numbers uh, to the previous element we get the next element in the same group which resembles in the properties so all these are noble gases which we get through these numbers that is why these numbers are called as magic numbers so let's classify these elements further and let's see how their properties repeat periodically. First let's know something about group 1 and group 2 which forms the S block of the periodic table. Group 1 elements are called as alkali metals. Why alkali metals? Because these metals on reacting with water form strong alkalis. All these metals show resembling properties with each other. All these elements, metals are highly reactive they are very reactive found usually found in the form of compounds with other elements all of them are very good conductors of heat and electricity and they have valency as one that is their atoms has one valence electrons that is their outermost shell has one electron group 2 elements are called as alkaline earth metals why alkaline earth metals because when dissolved in water, their oxides are basic in nature. That is, they form weaker alkalis. And they are found in earth's crust. So they are known as alkaline earth metals. They too show resembling properties with each other. They are too highly reactive but less reactive than the group 1 metals. They have high melting and boiling point. And they have valency as 2. That is, the atoms of these elements have 2 electrons in its outermost shell. Now all these S block elements which are the metals of group 1 and group 2 can be easily cut with the help of knife. 
on cutting they shine and they are soft metals now t block is formed by transition metals a set of metallic elements which occupies the central block in the periodic table p block is formed by a group of noble gases non metals metalloids and post transition metals which are the metals between metalloids and transition metals group 13 is known as boron family as boron is the first member of this group group 14 is called carbon family group 15 as nitrogen family group 16 is called oxygen family group 17 as halogen family as halogens occupy this group and last group which is group 18 is also known as zero group so it is occupied by noble gases which are also called as inert gases so it is composed of helium neon argon krypton xenon radon and oxygen all these elements do not take part in chemical reactions as they are outermost shells are completely filled and their electronic con configuration is stable and all these are gases so they are called as noble gases the f block is composed of lanthanide series and actinide series lanthanide series are rare earth metals there are 15 metallic chemical elements placed in this series from atomic number 57 till 71 from lanthanum till lutetium it is known as lanthanide series because all the elements in this series are chemically similar to lanthanum the actinide series comprises of radioactive elements from atomic number 89 till 103 so again there are 15 radioactive elements placed in this series and this full series is named after its first element which is actinium some of these elements are used in nuclear reactors and nuclear weapons further the elements can be also classified as solid liquids and gases the only liquid elements at standard temperature and pressure are bromine with atomic number 35 and mercury with atomic number 80 other elements like rubidium cesium francium or gallium become liquid at room temperature or above room temperature the elements like oxygen nitrogen fluorine chlorine all the noble gases and hydrogen are gases they are in gaseous state at room temperature rest all are solids next if you compare the modern periodic table to mendeleev's periodic table you will see that many of the problems from mendeleev's periodic table are solved in modern periodic table for example the first one the isotopes of an element had no place in mendeleev's periodic table because of different mass number and that period, uh, table was arranged on the basis of mass number the atomic mass of the element but here it is arranged since it is arranged with respect to the atomic numbers the isotopes of element can be placed in one box because even if the, there are isotopes for one single element those isotopes will have same atomic number second atomic number cannot be fractional it increases by one integer from one element to the next it has thus placed a limit on number of elements today all 118 elements have been discovered third position of cobalt and nickel do not remain to be a problem anymore if we see the demerits of modern periodic table the modern periodic table could not assign hydrogen a right place it shows similarities with group 1 so it is placed in group 1 but it, it also shows similarities to group 17 plus it is a non metal so it is placed in the metal side so modern periodic table could not give hydrogen the right place second the lanthanide series and actinide series is placed separately it is not in the main body of the modern periodic table which can be considered as the second demerit of modern periodic table it is easy to remember the properties of an element if the position of the element is known in the modern periodic table and since the modern periodic table is divided into four blocks it has made the study of chemistry systematic and easy so that's it for this part this was the third part of periodic classification of elements hope you have understood uh, everything whatever i have explained you if you have any doubts then you can place a comment in the comment box i'll surely reply it and if you have not subscribed my channel then please subscribe it share this video like this video thank you very much for watching